joining us. Um, but I, I just want to thank, you know, Josh for joining us early because um, you're in central time. So this is real early for you. I've, I finished my coffee, but maybe Josh, you haven't had yours yet, but uh, why don't you just kick us off? Just kind of tell us who you are, Josh, what your experience is with uh, Agile. I know you're a coach, and but just kind of explain everybody so they know what where your, uh, your experience is. Okay. Um, so I'm Josh Fryer. Uh, I'm currently in an Agile coach um, in San Antonio, Texas. I... Uh, I got my start as a, a, a scrum master in 2014 um, in Utah, uh, working with a software company there. Um, I then um, consulted with uh, the military, the Utah National Guard, uh, for a season um, and uh, helped them kind of initiate a transformation. And then that kind of connected me to my next client down here in San Antonio. Um, and uh, and helped me kick off a series of de kind of departmental transformations um, as they try to figure out their larger enterprise strategy, so to speak, right? As they try to roll everything up um, into the the giant masses. So um, so that's been you know a few skips, hops and skips around um, over the last six years. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a ride, a lot of little uh, unexpected twists and turns along the way, but it's been a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's, it's great to have you here, Josh. We appreciate it. Um, I know one thing, if you could talk just briefly and then we can see if Danita has a question or something, but um, I know a lot of people who go through this coaching cohort, because I know there's a few people that'll be watching this later, of course, you talked about being a scrum master and then transitioning to agile coach. That's where I think a lot of the people in this program kind of seem have questions around that. So talk to us about maybe about that journey and, and then kind of how you went about that. Okay. Um, I think one of the big things um, for me that as, as I've looked back to my journey is system coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for me that's the big leap um so as, as a scrum master you're very focused on your team and you might have awareness of your system to you know know where to go to help resolve impediments for your team but it's it's starting to look at what is the larger system that i'm in and what is like maybe this bottleneck doesn't hurt my team but it hurts a team that hurts my team. So I'm gonna help with that anyway. And sometimes it seems counterintuitive uh, to be helping on something that doesn't directly affect your team, but it's getting into that systems level thinking that helps you start to see things in a broader perspective. And I think that's, the, that's one of the primary things that helps as an agile coach is being able to, to see the system and reveal the system. Um, Obviously, I'm, I'm sure there are, oh, sorry about the camera. Um, no, it's fine. Um, obviously, there are probably a lot of book recommendations. Um, one of the ones that helped me with this a lot was um, The Phoenix Project. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is more like kind of the, the fable um, approach, but mm -hmm. being able to then take that and apply it to my system, be like, who's my Brent? And then in my case, my Brent was, an entire team, not just one person, you know, yeah. so then you start to kind of exploit that, exploit that funnel. So that was um, somewhat revelatory for me um, personally in understanding systems thinking. Yeah, that's so important to right. kind of understand, like you said, those kind of those maybe downstream where things are going and then with some impediments and how those impact your team. Yeah. Um, so, so that was big. Uh, the other thing was just learning, learning how to, learning how to coach up, um, and and really have those honest conversations with with leaders, um, and and a lot of it comes. Um, I know. Uh, so this was primarily in the military, um, where 
where I got to exercise this because I was uh, an E6, uh, which is, um, you have enlisted an officer, so I was enlisted uh, sixth grade um, and uh, was, was coaching uh, E9 and a couple of officers. Uh, so E9 is as high as you can get in there with drinks. Um, but I was, was working with them and coaching them around leadership and organizational structure, um, you know, focusing on what are our outcomes, right? What, what does mission accomplishment look like? And then let's make sure that the things that we're doing are helping us accomplish that mission. Um, so again, an out, outcome over output focus and um, being able to speak their language, but also knowing that it wasn't my decision and ultimately they have to have responsibility, you know, take accountability for their decisions um, and, and just kind of guiding them uh, was, was instrumental as well. And I, I mean, I still stay in contact with a couple of them, you know, now years later, uh, checking mm -hmm. in every now and then see how it's going. It's kind of fun. Awesome. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Um, I'm good, I'm glad you can hear me. Um, yeah, so I, I think all of that's interesting. I think the tough part that I find um, today, right, where I'm learning to do better at coaching is one, finding the right clientele, right, that are truly invested in transformations. Um, so what are your thoughts on that, right? Like, you know, I'm I'm still working on, like I've, I've been, I guess, a little backstory. So I have been um, an agile practitioner since, 2008 um, was when I was certified as a scrum master, right? So I've been working with teams and coaching at some larger organizations or some smaller organizations since then. So one, thank you for being here this early. Um, so I'm still sipping on coffee today. I happen to have the day off. Um, so, you know, I guess I'm interested in hearing like, how do you get connected as a coach to really start to break over the okay, I'm just a scrum master and I have an agile coach certification. Hey, by the way, I've been doing this now for like 10 years, right? How do you, how do you get organizations to believe in you to lead them? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, okay. How do you get organizations to believe in you to lead them? In, in really keeping that mentality of a servant leadership, right? So mm -hmm. you, I know you said you're doing some coaching now. You've done some coaching with like military or like government kind of contracts. Are you doing all of that through consulting still? No, um, I'm actually doing that uh, as a as an internal employee currently. Um, okay. I started as a contractor and then converted um, to an employee. Um, sure. And then um, have moved departments since then. Um, okay. Now, some of that I think really comes into, and I know you mentioned this, but maybe others who, who you know, watch the recording later may not have done this. I think it's important to have a diversity of experience. Um, sure. And this, this is something I, I see a lot of Scrum Masters struggle with. It's like, well, this is my team, and I don't want to leave mm -hmm. the safety of my team. I've developed some great relationships. Um, right. And, and there's value in that. But there's also value in having different experiences and learning how to build relationships with new teams. Um, right. Being, sure. Yeah. Even within the same company, seeing, you know, how the system looks differently when you move your desk, you know, 20 feet down the row to a different cubicle to sit with a different team. Um, and oh, that makes sense. Struggles they have, you know, um, and so while well, well, I'm not advocating that you start necessarily job hopping um, all of the uh -huh. time. I think that that's important for a lot of Scrum Masters to um, to meet new teams, to work on different products, to right. um, you know, diversify your portfolio the same way you'd be counseled to do with, with investing, um, sure. so to speak. Um, now, yeah, as, exactly. as you do that, it, it gives you, again, talking kind of back to the beginning, some of that system perspective. You, um, if you're at the same company, you see the system from a different, you know, a different stance. Um, if you move right. to a different company, you start to see the same patterns 
And you're like, right. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. I thought it was that's just in a my experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then as you start to see those patterns, you can, um, uh, oh, and this is going to, well, when you look at the, the Scrum Master's responsibility to the organization, right. start to lean into that. Um, start to solve that things. Makes sense. As a servant leader, you're starting to show, I'm going beyond my team. And I'm going to right. solve problems for the greater system. And those right. are the things that, that leaders appreciate. That's how you can build trust with the leader. Because you're doing something that most leaders aren't expecting of their Scrum Masters. Right, um, right. They're, like they're change the change agent for the, yeah. Exactly. Um, and with those things, uh, when you start looking at those system level problems, sometimes you get invited into those. Um, I find that most of the time you do not. It's something you just have yeah. to say, I'm the scrum master. This is part of my job is to coach yeah. the organization. And this is a problem that I've identified and I'm right. going to go for it. Um, so what and, do you do when you, what do you do when you do that? Right. So, so say you have spent time in an organization. So my current situation is I've been with an organization now for two years um, and I've identified all kinds of problems. Right. Um, and have certainly helped to resolve several of those. Um, while my title isn't officially agile coach. Um, and again, I don't buy into titles a whole lot. Right. So, you know, titles are just that thing that HR likes to use <laughs> and, and understandably, right. They, they need that for their own reasons. Um, what I find myself at now is I guess telling the organization, Hey, these are the issues that we have and we've talked about them and talked about them and talked about them but their level of either willingness or ability to address those problems is somewhat low. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. And so, so there's where I find myself like almost frustrated because it's like, Hey, you know, we as a team collectively in it have been saying, these are our issues. We know how to solve them. Trust us. And we will solve these problems. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. I've seen, I've seen two different approaches to this. Um, one is finding, finding um, a sponsor on the leadership team. Who's going to give you the top cover? Who's going to help you <laughs> lean in? Who's going to make the connections for you? Really? Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, and that might be someone outside of your chain of command. So to speak, right? right? Uh, outside yeah, the reporting yeah. chain. Um, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And, um, and then you can start to collaborate with them, right? Uh, present the problem. This is, and make sure you articulate it. I think sometimes what happens is, as a scrum master is you're like, oh, well, I see this bottleneck here, and if we could just make that better, then it would be great. And leadership well, that's is like, fairly true. <laughs> right. right. Or or they don't see value in it, they don't experience pain from it. So some of it is right. the, the selection of the problem you're going to solve. Maybe it's not the biggest bottleneck, but it's going to give you the best return because yeah. now one sees the potential. Right. Um, and they are willing to trust a little bit more. Um, okay. And so then as they trust more, then you can tackle bigger things. Uh, you get more right. political capital uh, to, to spend with, with your organization. Um, the other thing that I have seen is, um, a unification of, um, the scrum masters in an area. So I'm talking about like communities of practice or guilds, um, and yeah, we've tried some guilds and that's been a bit tougher for us. Right. Um, I guess I feel like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off there. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the guilds can be tricky. And um, I'm um, sorry, my camera is not happy as the sun is starting to come up here. And That's okay. <laughs> trying to get 
Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, so okay. we've been yeah. trying. Uh, I guess to kind of refocus, right? So we've been trying guilds. We've been trying lists of issues. We've tried the problem statements. We've tried the surveys. We've tried a lot of different mechanisms, even to the point of going to the president of the company themselves and saying, hey, listen, here's a whole list of problems. Like, we really need to solve these problems. And it's a small organization that I work for right now, right? Um, and it is a nonprofit. So it's not as if there's a lot of funds to really mm -hmm. just throw money at a problem. Does that make sense? Yep. And so we have some really sharp individuals and, and, and I'll say that we are blessed to have the developers that we have, but there has been over the last year because these problems have been surfaced over and over and over again with no real trust to fix them. Um, our development turnover has been staggering. Um, when I started with this company, probably 21 months ago, roughly, we had like 15 to 20 developers. We're down to about four or five now. So they're trying to send the messages. Leadership says they're listening. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, that's why I would say to you, okay, help. Like, it's almost at what almost feels like critical mass kind of concept, right? Where these developers are literally the last few that we have that have SME knowledge into the system, the back end, the code, everything. Like, these developers, one of them has already turned in their resignation. We're going to be down to like two SMEs. That's and you know, and if you think about larger organizations, right? Typically, you don't run into this as much, but when you're talking about small companies, nonprofits, those kinds of of firms, it's it's very tough to be someone who is passionate about agile, <laughs> right? And wants to make a change, but then you know, what do you do with that, right? So I guess I'm looking to you to say, if you were in that scenario, your development staff is very small. They're already talking about outsourcing a good bit of it. What do you do then? Yeah. I, um, I know I'm throwing some tough ones at you. Sorry. <laughs> More coffee, right? <laughs> Benita, can I ask a, a quick question here? What do sure. you think? And it sounds like you've alluded to a few things, but what do you think is the biggest, like number one challenge that this organization is facing? I think the biggest number one challenge that this organization seems to be facing is um, really getting leadership who this, this nonprofit is from the education side, right? So getting leadership to understand the role of IT and at a deeper level in an agile transformation, right? Yeah. They want to be agile. They like the word, they mm -hmm. like the concept. Um, they do some things that other small companies don't. So I think the biggest challenge if I were to articulate that is getting leadership to understand, hey, there's a certain way that we need to work, right? Mm -hmm. And we need the business side to help us support or really, it's, it's just this constant battle between the business side and IT. And I see these lines and these walls getting thrown up constantly, right? So it's like we're spending more time beating down the walls than we are actually getting work done on a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Does so that make a, sense? Is that, so is that a good answer silos for you? silos then? Is that kind of kind of sounds like there's a, an IT silo oh, yeah. and a business silo and they don't really collaborate? There is. Exactly. And even when the IT side reaches out proactively, mm -hmm. right, um, both to leadership and to the business side to say, hey, we just want your partnership and your help. Yeah. Right. We're not here to point fingers. We're not here to play the blame game. We're here because we want to support. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes, you know, and historically, there's been some 
some battles from what I understand, right? Yeah. That have not fared well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get it. So I think the biggest challenge is that, right? Breaking down those silos. If the silos can get broken down, all other things can be fixed in time, right? right. Yep. Um, right. So I guess I I am asking for your guys' help on how do you approach that? Um, and, and I really liked, uh, what was it? Josh's idea of getting the champion, yep. right. in leadership to help with that. Mm-hmm. I think that's maybe something that we're missing. Um, the guilds they've all been trying to do, but I think our development staff is losing patience, right? Obviously with the mass exodus that's been happening. Yeah. Do you have someone in mind to, that could be, like Josh said, a sponsor? Or? I think so. I think maybe approaching that individual is probably my next move. So mm-hmm. thank you for that, right? I'm going to try that because doing this agile transformation, I'm very used to larger organizations where you have money to be able to affect the change. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this situation, we're pretty limited on funds to be able to affect, to affect change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with, with that sponsor, I just want to um, ask, if, are you familiar with the Cotter's eight step process for leading change? I'm not. Okay. Um, so this is something, and I'll, I'll drop the link here in the chat, but you can search oh, John great. Cotter, A-O-T-T-E-R. Um, it's an eight-step process for leading change. And so one of the things is creating the sense of urgency. So uh, it, w- when I hear you know, y- your situation, you see it as urgent, but others do not. And the ones uh, who don't okay. see it as urgent, are the ones who need to action it or or need to initiate the action. Um, And so looking at how do you frame that in a way that makes them care? Oh, this is good. Um, Okay. And then kind of that guiding coalition, that's your sponsor, right? Like you have a sponsor, you're able to, right? You've at least won them over on the sense of urgency and you can start to kind of you know, bring in a, a few people, you, you get that vision, right? Being able to communicate, not just this is the problem state, but this is how much better it could be. Yeah, um, and exactly. Now, and now people start to like, oh, now I can see what you're talking about. And you start to get right. that volunteer army. People are like, yeah, I want to help with this. I don't want to just watch this. Like, I want to help with this. I want that future. Right. Um, and then, then you start to like, that's really where you start to get momentum. I would say is, is um, you know, getting into that, as you get that volunteer army, um, I don't know, I, I look at the circle on, on the webpage, right? And it comes into enlist volunteer army. Yeah, no, this down, is great. I'm looking at it. Yeah. You're gaining momentum and it helps you get up the hard parts, right? Enabling action, getting your short-term wins, sustaining the acceleration. Um, and then really instituting that change, institutionalizing that change. Well, and then you're right back when at I the look top. At, yeah, when I look at this list, I would say number three has been the most challenging one. And I've been able to affect it in the smaller teams within the organization in IT, like DevOps, right? Or um, some of the development teams that they've had. So this is fantastic stuff. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, the, I'll, I'll share a quick story about point number three, the, st- the strategic vision. Um, okay. So I've, I've been working with the department now for all, coming up on three years. And when I got there, they were like, we just don't know what's happening. Like, we're doing a lot of stuff, but we don't know what's coming up next. And we don't know what we're going to be working on right you know, in, the, in the coming months like we know we have a ton yeah. of stuff and we have a lot of people asking things asking us for for stuff but like it, it just wasn't organized um and yeah, yeah. The, 
the organization was using SAFE and, and we started looking at, you know, so we, we moved towards PI planning. Um, uh, and I think yeah. we've now done um, about 12, um, 12 program increments at this point. Um, oh, great. And I'm now working with leadership to evolve beyond program increment planning. And they're like, wait, mm. I thought this was the goal. It's like, no, this isn't the goal. This is the start. That was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was one step towards getting your, you know, getting things organized. And PI planning helps right. you, but there's something beyond it. And you yeah. can do more. And I'm in that mode right now of trying to paint that vision because they got something that they like that benefit them. Right. It, it's working okay for them. But as the coach, That's I'm trying to inspire right. them further into realizing even more potential. And that becomes uncomfortable right. for them. So, uh, um, and that's the it, next wave of change that uh, I get you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So it looks like we only have about two minutes. So. Well, Josh, I just want to thank you for sharing a little extra time with us. And uh, Danita, good to have you on. Uh, it's a good discussion. And I, I think yeah. I took a lot of notes and I think you were as well, right, Danita? Yes, absolutely. And I'm staring at this website right now, like going, hmm, I need to draft an email today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm like, this I'm is great stuff. I'm like, I can work with this. Good, good. I'm glad I'm glad it was helpful. And I'm glad you've got some, some uh, next steps. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, and Tom, thank you for putting this together. You bet. You bet. Josh, we appreciate your time and uh, thank you so much. And just appreciate everybody here. We'll get this video posted for everyone else. So thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Right, Likewise. Thank you, Tom. Thank you Danita. Cheers. Bye-bye.